tramp stuck beneath a tree, desperately waiting for someone whose existence they're not sure of. It stars alternative comedians Rick Mayall and Adrian Edmondson in what are perhaps their most difficult roles to date. Surely one should hear the tick tick. Silence! I can hear something. Hmm? Where? Ah, it's the heart. Damnation! Silence! Perhaps it's stopped. Which one of you smells, sir? Oh. <laughs> um, well, he has stinking breath. And I have stinking feet. I must go. When Waiting for Godot was first staged by Peter Hall at London's Arts Theatre in 1955, Samuel Beckett was an unknown playwright. Since then, the roles of Estragon and Vladimir have attracted some of the leading names in comedy. Max Wall at Manchester's Royal Exchange, John Alderton at The National, and, more recently, Robin Williams and Steve Martin on Broadway. But in this production, for the first time, an established comedy duo is taking up the challenge. I think any double act uh, basically works along much the same premise. So you have to be friends, you know, this is on, on the stage, you have to be friends and you also have to have arguments. There has to be a reason why you're together, but it doesn't have to be explained, which is much like Waiting for Godot. You have to make a whole person with two people who have deficiencies come together to make a whole person. I think that's where the comedy comes from. Uh, what, you know, very simply, one of them's clever and one of them's stupid. They're not my boots. Not yours? No, mine were black. These are brown. Are you sure yours were black? Well, they were a kind of grey. And these are brown? So, sure. well, they're a kind of green. So! Sure. Well, of all the... You see, it's ah, all a lot of bloody... I see what's happened. Yes, I see what it's it is. It's all a lot of bloody... It's all... elementary. Someone else came along, took your boots, and left you his. Why? Well, his were too tight for him, so he took yours. <laughs> but mine were too tight. For you, not for him. Oh, I'm tired. <sighs> I thought we should just treat it as a new play and, uh, and work on it in that way. And so we've picked up the text and tried to understand it from moment to moment. And that's the way we've tackled it. And I think and we, we've resisted uh, doing an interpretation. We've resisted modernising it in the sense of putting them in leather jackets with studs on or any of that kind of thing. And, and in fact, the more we got to know the piece, the more classical and the more uh, it went back to, to what it said on the page. The skull! Alas! But it's not just the words that'll bring the audience to this production. Beckett wouldn't be playing on Shaftesbury Avenue today without the pulling power of Rick and Aid. When I was on the National, they said, does the National Theatre really need to use TV comedians as audience fodder? You know? I mean, there's that kind of, there was that kind of snobbery there. I think maybe sometimes it does. You I know. think there still is. If you've got old colonels with monocles looking round a Mohican to see the stage, I think that's exactly what the theatre's there for, is to like bring everyone together in some kind of weedy sort of thing to say. But it's true. I mean, that's the one art form where you can get that common experience where everyone realises that they all laugh at the same thing at the same time. I think a lot of what they do uh, comes out of comes comes out of a Beckett originally. Do you? Oh, pardon. Carry on. No, no, after you. The fascinating no, no. thing for me so is, has you. been oh, watching them translate our intellectual conversations about what each section of the play means into the, the sort of physicality that they bring to it. Hey, now that's an idea. Let's abuse each other. Yeah. Moron. Vermin. Cretin. Critic? Oh. 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 Well, the critics got their own back for that one, by and large. They don't seem to have been impressed by Mail and Edmondson's performances. The Daily Mail says this is not acting, it is showing off. The Guardian condemns the production as Godot without tears or any real profound sense of pain. For The Independent, it's a mildly entertaining way of wasting two and a half hours. The Times asks, where is their vulnerability, their helplessness and their pain? 
The Telegraph tempers its criticism with an admission that there is no doubt that Mayall and Edmondson are an impressive, if far from endearing, double act. Only the Express approves, saying the two of them are murderously funny. Prove them all wrong if you want to at the Queen's Theatre, London. Tickets are still available. Sally, time for you, the sport.